Hey, Wayne Fox back with another video. This one is a follow up to my copyright videos where I said I would walk through the registration process and show how I do it. It's actually simpler than it uh, used to be and it's not as expensive as it used to be for most photographers anyway. This is a fairly long and tedious video. I apologize for that. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss any little detail because the one thing I do know is that when you send your registration in, you have to make sure that everything's perfect. If anything doesn't match up, they will disregard or they will disallow the registration. You'll have to do it all over again. I have uh, put a fairly extensive index of timestamps down below to talk about each of the individual subjects. If you need to go back and review something I said, or if you are really want to just skip ahead to some more important parts, especially the part about what you do once you actually get online. And I've also got links to several of the things I'm using, my resources. So with that, let's uh, get into the video. First, let me just quickly I summarize the eight things that you need to do, the eight steps that you are required to complete to register your images. The first thing is to create your group of images to register. You can register up to 750 at one time. You need to export or create a JPEG of each of those images. You need to create an acceptable list of the images. Easier than it sounds, as you'll find out in a minute. You need to create an account or log on to your account at eco.copyright.gov. And there you need to use the create a case using the register a group of photographs option. There are 10 steps once you create a case that you must complete. Most of them are repetitive and involve clicking one button to populate something from an earlier step. And this isn't as hard as it sounds. Upon completing the 10 steps, you are asked to pay the $55 fee. And once you pay the fee, you will then be able to upload the list and the files that you created earlier. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to complete the process when you start it. So if you're uncomfortable with anything, you can stop and pause. If you think you've made a mistake, you can delete it. If you're just really not sure what you're doing and you're practicing a few times and you still aren't sure, you can delete it. So until you pay the $55, there's nothing uh, set. It's just a working case. Once you've paid the money and you've uploaded the files, then somewhere between three and seven months later, you should get notification from the copyright office that that group of images is now registered. So let's go through the steps one at a time. The first step is to select the group you want to register. Unfortunately, this part of the video is going to be a little more complicated and take a little longer than I would like, but it's a fairly important step because there's one problem. You can register a group of photographs that have been published or your group that have been unpublished, but you can't register them at the same time. And if published, they all must have been published within the same calendar year. So of course that begs the question, what does it mean by published? If we read from the copyright compendium, it says that the Copyright Act defines publication as the distribution of copies of a work to the public by sale or other transfer of ownership. So for example, a one-time use would be a distribution. It also states that offering to distribute copies constitutes publication. It goes on and it says public performance or display of a work does not of itself constitute publication. So there might be times where an image is not published, but based on this definition, most images that photographers are going to want to register, especially if they're going back and registering their older work, will be considered published. A few important points. The concept of the public refers to anyone, even an individual client. Yes, the copyright law generally is associated with protecting things like movies and books and magazines and recording artists. But in fact, the public is anybody that's not yourself, bottom line. Any sale transfer or offer to sell or transfer is publication, but there's no requirement that the transfer is paid or has other compensation. Last, public display is a somewhat gray area, but if there is any implication at all that the work can be obtained for any reason, especially purchased, it will be considered publication. So what about if you just put them on Instagram or Facebook? There's some good information about this at this website that I've posted below. One thing I thought would be worth mentioning is this comment by this Thomas Cotter in an article he wrote, regarding a specific case where this was the item being discussed, where he opined that whether an internet transmission is a publication depends on whether the facts indicate 
that website users were authorized to make copies. Okay, and this would be a copy in any manner whatsoever. Photographers likely can consider their images published on a website when they allow their photos to be downloaded or copied, or obviously purchased or obtained for any other use. Goes on and says, so if your photos are on your website for display only, then they probably are not published. So there might be rare circumstances where you put a image on Instagram or Facebook and it's something that you typically don't do and there's nobody that would assume that they can buy it if they want. But I will point out that this sentence uses the word probably and any opinion regarding the law that has the word probably in it is not very concrete. So I wouldn't maybe put a lot of weight into it. Well, what if you're not sure if they're published or more importantly, what if you just don't remember when they're published because you're trying to go back and register images from the past? I think we need to understand what importance the publication date has and why we want to make sure we do this right. The Copyright Office Compendium says to pursue these remedies and the remedies that's speaking of are statutory damages, court fees and attorney fees. Now understand that any infringement, the copyright holder has the right to seek actual damages. And that right is never lost. You can always seek actual damages. But if you register the images in a timely way, you also have the right to choose statutory damages instead, as well as recover court fees and attorney fees. So it's sort of an important concept. Anyway, to pursue these remedies, an unpublished work must be registered before the infringement occurs while a published work must be registered within three months after publication or before the infringement occurs. Now this really will be the only bearing that the publication date has to determine if the infringement occurred after this requirement was met or before. If the infringement occurred before these conditions were met, then the copyright holder has lost the right to seek statutory damages, attorney fees, and court costs. If the infringement occurred after the image was registered, regardless of when it was published or registered, then the copyright holder maintains those rights for those damages. One thing I might mention here is the importance of the CASE Act and how this would apply regarding registration of your images. The CASE Act is currently in Congress before both the House and the Senate with a lot of by party support. And what the CASE Act is, is the Copyright Alternative and Small Claims Enforcement. And this establishes a voluntary small claims board within the Copyright Office to hear copyright infringement cases. This provides copyright owners an alternative to the process of filing a lawsuit in federal court, the currently the only option available, which is obviously expensive and time consuming, the cost of the attorneys, this means that most copyright violations, which are pretty minor, are disregarded because the copyright holder really can't afford to pursue them. And there are thousands of these types of violations going on all the time, and a lot of photographers have had this happen to them. The authority of this board will be to grant statutory damages of up to 15000 per work infringed. So obviously, if you haven't registered your images in a timely way and you've lost the right to statutory damages, then that means you've lost your ability to use this small claims alternative to seek damages. So registering your images in a timely way will become even more important and allow photographers, a lot of photographers, the ability to grant damages that have not been able to do so in the past. This most likely will only be able to be used if there are statutory damages. There might still be the ability to seek actual damages in a case like this. I don't know that that is excluded but it is obviously designed for these cases where statutory damages apply. I haven't studied it quite in depth. This has been something that's been trying to get through Congress for a long time. It was reintroduced in May, and this time it seems like it does have enough momentum that it might get through, but who knows, it still might take them forever to do it. One of the things that this law, I believe, would do more important than giving copyright holders some claims is the publicity it will cause if suddenly thousands of people are being fined and paying damages to photographers because of copyright infringement, we know that it goes on all the time. It's pretty easy to get on Facebook or YouTube and find violations. So the publicity of this will bring an awareness to the public that it isn't okay just to use anything you want. If you don't own the copyright to it, 
you can't use it unless you get permission. And I think that'll be the biggest benefit of the CASE Act if it ever comes to fruition. Well, enough of that. So what if you aren't sure if the images are published or if you don't remember when they are published? What do you do? Now, the one thing I will say is that if you are registering your image because you have an infringement, and that's why you're watching this video, please quit watching the video. I'm not going to give you any advice in that regard. And you need to contact a good copyright attorney because you're going to need to to have special handling of your registration. Recently, the Supreme Court held that until you receive the registration back from the registration office, which can take seven to eight months, you can't pursue the case in federal court. Now, there are ways to expedite that and get that registration quicker. And if you have an infringement, you're going to need an attorney to help you expedite that. This video is really intended for those who are just trying to learn how to register their images. There's no infringement involved. And if you're not sure and don't remember, that's really, what do you do? Now, what I'm going to suggest is the only things I can think of. This isn't legal advice, but considering the fact that the infringement hasn't occurred, the the publication date really doesn't have a lot of bearing on your ability to seek statutory damages. So I think that really, all you can really do is make your best estimate. Do it faithfully and as the best of your ability but I don't know what else you can do. One thing you might be able to do is just use the capture date as the publication date. A lot of times that's when you show images is right when you shoot them or within a few days. And so using the capture date would be a pretty logical concept. You might even be able to remember when you created your website originally and you're offering images to the public through a website And so you might be able to use that as the publication date. And in fact, that's the example I'm going to use through the remainder of this video. So that's really all you can do. Sorry this part of the video was so long. It's pretty important. But once you've selected your group of images, it's time to go on to the next step. Okay, enough about that. Let's get into actually making the group. I'm going to show how I did it in Lightroom. If you don't use Lightroom, the concepts are similar. Basically, you've got to gather the images together in some organized way. And Lightroom makes this very easy because I can use a collection. So what I decided to do, I th- I was pretty confident that I built my first website that offered my images for sale in 2017. So I decided to go into these collections and the limited edition and the open edition uh, galleries that I have here in Lightroom. This represents all of the images that I've actually put on a website and offered for sale so far to date. So I selected those two collections and then I went up to my filter bar at the top and to show that you can hit the forward slash key and I selected metadata and I basically said, okay, I want all the images in this uh, collection that I have that were taken before 2018. So I clicked on 2001 and I held the shift key down and clicked on 2017 And what I have left are all the images, and purple is uh, one of the color codes I use that indicate that I've finalized the image and I've made it for sale. And that's one of the criteria to create this smart collection. So these are all the images that I feel I published before 2018 on my website at some point in time. And I was pretty sure that I published that first major website in 2017. That's my best guess. So once I've done that, I need to select all of those images And now I'm going to make a new collection. So we're going to create a collection. And I'm going to call this uh, Copyright Registration Through 2017. And I'm going to include the selected photographs. And I'm going to create that collection. Now, this collection contains the 250 photographs I'm planning on registering as far as this group of photographs. And that's how I created my group. So what if you needed to create a group that was more random? You had pictures in many various folders and you really didn't have a preset collection to find those. So let me just show what I would do if that was me. This gallery work folder contains lots of images that have been I've been working on for quite some time. I've never published them or made them available for sale. Some of them I just don't know if I like well enough. Others I just haven't taken the time to get ready. You know, lots of reasons they're still there, even though they're, you know, like you say, some of them have been in there for a long time, 10 years in this case. So if I wanted to go through this and register all these because they're unpublished, the quickest way would be to 
create a new collection. Give us some useful name like unpublished images registered in 2019. This will become the title of our group when we register with the Copyright Office and this will be used several other times. So it can be as descriptive as you want. There's really no limits. So we'll create that group, but before we do that, we'll set it as our target collection. You can always set a collection to be a target collection just by right clicking on it and selecting it. In this case it already is, so we don't want to deselect it. I would now go back up to this work folder and I would just click on each folder one at a time and I would just hit the B key to add it that collection. I would select the most representative one from each folder. For example, this is the original TIFF file. Hit the B key, move to the next one. You can see that this one is blue, this one is green. My color code, green means I've selected it to work on. Blue means I like it and it's almost ready. And then of course, once I publish it, it goes to purple. If you accidentally add an image that you don't want, you can hit B again, it will remove it. It's just a toggle. So I'll go through these one at a time and I will pick the representative image. Sometimes there's only one, so I just have to hit the B key. Sometimes there's a whole bunch, so usually I'll look for a color code and I'll pick that one. Sometimes there's multiple images, so I'll just go ahead and pick all three. So I can quickly go through this entire group of images and probably in five minutes I could find all of the ones that I haven't published that I've been working on for a while. And I could create a group to register as an unpublished group. Because they're unpublished, the year that they were taken doesn't matter. We talked earlier about what if you're not sure and you think you need to consider the ones published based on the time they were taken. In my case, that's pretty easy because each of my file names contains the actual day the image was taken. So I could organize them by year. I could even create one big group and then just uh, create subgroups by year within that group. So using a target collection is a really way to quickly go through a lot of images and find a group that you want to register. Now, if you don't use Lightroom, I think you understand the concept. There are other programs which you can do this in. And basically a lot of programs that use photographs can either can make collections or make albums, which are basically the same thing. So you want to create a group and put them all into one central place. And every one of these images in its own folder on my hard drive, but that's what makes this work so well. That's how I created my group. That's the first step. So the next step is to create a small JPEG of each of those images. Before I do that, I noticed earlier that one of these is a uh, duplicate. I have two of the same image. I don't know that having two copies of the same image, in this case, the file names are going to end up the same, so it might be an issue. So I just need to remove this from the collection. So that leaves me with 249. So sorry about that. Let's get on with this. So what I need to do is export these in Lightroom. That's very easy. I'm going to go export. I'm going to need to export a JPEG. So I'm going to start with this nice little 4,000 pixel JPEG template. I'm going to leave the choose folder later as the main option. I'm going to change the file naming and I'm just going to add CR standing for copyright to the end of the file. And I'm going to save this as a JPEG sRGB and I don't need a really high quality file. The total upload size is limited to 500 megabytes, which shouldn't be a problem even if you have 750 photographs, but we're just going to save it to 60 and then we're going to say the Long edge is 1500. Again, they really don't provide a limit or a guideline other than it's a decent quality file. I'm just going to throw that to 72 PPI, kind of an irrelevant number nowadays, but that looks more normal. I do not need sharpening on them, so I'm going to turn that off. Doesn't matter if the metadata is in there or not. No watermark and do nothing. So basically, that's what I need for the export. I need to export those, and I don't know if you want to save these permanently or not. It might be a good idea. I'm going to give this folder the same name as my collection. So copyright registration. And the reason I'm doing this is the one thing you have to do when you create your case online is you have to give the group of photographs a title. This is actually going to end up my title of my group. This title can be anything you want. So I suggest you make it somewhat descriptive. Baxter Wedding 2017, Southtown Soccer 2018, Additionally, if you're going to register more than 750 photographs, so you have to do it in two groups, do just that, create a title and call one group one, then group two, etc. 
We're going to create that and we'll say open. And this won't take too long. In the meantime, let's go ahead and go on to the next step. So now that we've exported the images, the next step is to create an acceptable list of those images. Not as hard as it sounds. Here are two links and I will put these in the description below so you can go straight to them. And each of these links takes us to the Copyright Office website and provides you not only the template for this acceptable list, but a pretty detailed instruction on how to do it. Here we are on the instruction page for group registration of published photographs. So this is the P in this thing at the end and the other one had a U. And if you click here where it says template, we'll take you down here. And then here you will actually be able to download the template. Click this and it will download to your computer. And then you will open it either in Excel or Numbers or I'm pretty sure that OpenOffice will work if you don't have any of either of those programs. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to switch over to Numbers. It's the one I use. The only difference between the two lists is if you're using the list for published photographs, the month your publication is required, so this column D is there. If you're doing the list for unpublished photographs, then this column D is not required, so it's not in the list. Now what we have to do is put the title of each image here and the file name of each image here. That sounds a little harder than it really is. So I'm going to show how to do this on a Mac. I'm pretty sure that you can use a similar technique to do it on a Windows computer. And when I get some time, I'll actually research it and make sure if there's any tricks to that, I can maybe make a little quick follow-up video to let anybody know. So on a Mac, what we need to do is go to the folder that we saved all the images in. Here it is. And I've got it in list view. I'm going to click on the first one, shift click on the last one, or I could have hit command A. And the key is it says 249 of 249 selected. And this number will be important later on. So now I, I know I have them all selected. I'm just going to hit command C to copy those. Now I need to open up text edit. And the best way to do that is to just hit your search function and type it in and there it's open. I need to go here to the format menu and say make this plain text and this is a pretty important step. And now I'm going to paste that into this window and so there are all my file names in this window. Now the reason I have to do this step is because when I copy if I try to paste in the spreadsheet it's going to try to paste the photographs and everything. So I need to eliminate the data down to just the file names and this is the easiest way I found to do it. Now before I take them over into my template, I noticed that all of the instructions on the Copyright Office, they do not show the file extension. So just to be safe, I'm going to eliminate those. If I hit Command F and I type in .jpg and then I click over here and say replace and I leave replace blank and I hit all. Okay, and then I hit done. Now I'm going to select all and copy again. Now I'm ready to go back to my template. I'm going to click in box number one and hit command V to paste. And that will populate each file name into the box. And if I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that 249 is my last one. Now you'll notice when I did that, it added each of those to this far box. And this box you're going to use later in, I believe, step number two. And all this box does is add a comma to the end of each of these. And this will make it a lot easier to complete step number two, because you're just going to select a certain number of these, and you're going to copy them and paste them. So it makes it pretty easy. What we need to do here now, though, is we need to put the file name as well. So I'm just going to click here and do the same thing. Just hit paste. I'm just going to say that the title of my photograph is the same as my file. That's what a lot of people do. That seems pretty standard procedure. Next, I need to go to the month and year of publication. In numbers, the first thing I want to do is go over here and take my cell and change it from automatic to text. I don't want uh, numbers to try to figure out what kind of date it is because I'm only going to put the month and the year. I'm not going to put a day. And I'm going to say that I created my website in the 11th month of 2017. All of my pictures were taken before that point in time. I can click here and I can copy that. 
I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here and I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to shift click on the bottom one. So all these are selected. Again, I'm going to go change from automatic to text. And then I'm going to hit command V. Scroll back up. And that will populate all of that with that same date. Now, if your publication dates are different, this is where it might take a little time because you might need to go and put different months. As I said, in my case, none of these have been fringed on. Once they're registered, this publication date really has no bearing on my options. And so I think I've uh, provided enough accuracy here. So our list is almost ready. We have one more item to put in once we get to the Copyright Office. We'll leave it open for now because we're going to need it as we register online. It's a little tedious to create, but after you get through it one time, you'll, uh, you know, it's pretty simple. Anyway, let's head over to the Copyright Office. The address is eco.copyright.gov. If you do not have an account there, you can click here to create an account. Otherwise, you can log into your account there. The first thing I recommend especially if you've never logged on before, is go to My Profile, go to Address Book, and make sure that you have a primary address listed here with a check mark. And if you don't, click New and add it because this will make things go a lot faster. You might also want to just double check your user profile, make sure everything there is correct as well. So we're ready to create our case. The step we're going to use is this register a group of photographs option. Gives you some information, all of which I've already gone over today. Hit start registration. One thing to keep in mind is that we don't have to finish this today. There's no money going to happen until you are completely comfortable that everything's ready to go. And if you get all done and you aren't sure, you can delete it. You can practice it a hundred times if you need to. Until you actually finalize it and pay, it doesn't matter. Anytime you see a red asterisk, that's a required item. So we're going to first say what our group is. In this case, it's published. This will list the criteria. I've already gone over all that. Also, this is a link to that help sheet that I showed earlier. We need to agree that we've saved it. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. Now you'll notice there are 10 steps listed over in the left. As we complete each step, it'll check it off, but we can go back to any step at any time by clicking here in the field. Notice that we've been assigned a case number now. So we want to highlight that and copy it. Command or Control C. Pop back to our spreadsheet because that number is required here. I'm going to click here. I'm just going to remove that, including the brackets, and paste it. Make sure there's a space. That's what it looks like on the instruction page or close to it. So this list is all finished and it's ready to save to provide to the copyright office. I prefer sending it as a PDF because that way I know the spreadsheet won't mess anything up. If you prefer, you can send it as an .xls or .xlsx uh, spreadsheet file. To save a PDF in numbers, what I want to do is first of all, get rid of all the extra rows because this is, has 750 rows for 750 photographs. So I'm going to click there I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to shift click here. So I've got all these rows selected. I'm going to right click on any one of these and I'm going to just say delete selected rows. So now I have 249. That way the PDF is only as long as it needs to be. With numbers, you simply go file, export to PDF. If you're using Excel or another program, you can either save it as an Excel spreadsheet or you can export it as a PDF. Most people have done that before. I usually put best quality and I want to fit each sheet to a single page because this really is just a one sheet spreadsheet. Hit next. It's asking us for a name. I'm going to use the same name that I've used for my collection and my folder as the name for this list. What we need to do is add case number and paste that case number there. This is required. So two things to keep in mind. This is required in the name of this list and this must match the title that we're going to create here in just a few minutes on the website. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this right now. So I've got it on this title. I need to find that folder of images. They're right here. And then I can export it. We're going to pop over to the finder. And we're going to find that folder of images. 
Here they are right here. I'm going to just open that real quick. And this is in preview or Adobe Acrobat, whatever you can see. So my this is exactly what they're asking me to provide. And it's ready to go. Case numbers here. Everything's in the right column. Ready to go. Let's quit preview. I'm going to sort this by name. And I think that's what matches my spreadsheet. Let's just go back and double check. So it matches the spreadsheet. I assume that the list should match the sequence of the files. Once I've done that, I'm going to go over here. And I'm also going to edit the title of this folder. And I'm also going to put whoop, case number and paste that case number in there. Whoops. And I need to go get that case number. I have a really cool utility here called Copy Clip, which I can go back to get anything off my clipboard up to the last 80 copies that I've made. Pretty cool. Anyway. So that is now ready to submit. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to right click on it. Make sure you've moved your numbers or Excel spreadsheet out of this folder if you're sending them a PDF. You can see that I've got this out here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say compress. Make a zip file because they recommend that when you upload you do it as a single zip file. Again this size must be less than 500 megabytes. Shouldn't be any problem for 750 photographs. If it is you're sending them way too large of photographs. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to pop over to Lightroom and I'm going to make sure that I have my collection selected and all of my files in that collection are selected. I'm going to open up keywording and I'm going to go down to the bottom of this keyword list and where it says click here to enter keyword and I'm going to paste that number here. Hit tab. So now my case number is a key word as part of the metadata in all of my original files. And when I get my actual copyright registration number, which will be different, I can easily search through the metadata and find these files and replace this number with the actual registration number. This way the registration number is permanently attached to my master files and will of course transfer to any other files that I create from that master file. So with that, let's go back over to the spreadsheet. And we've got that all ready. Now we're going to need this last column here. And so we're going to leave the spreadsheet open. We're ready to go back to the website and to start doing the next steps. We're ready to finish this step. It says the first time you click new, you will provide information for the entire group of photographs. So we're going to click new. And this is basically the title of our group. And remember our title is, and I can go up here and grab my copy clip right there and paste. Okay, I have 249. You can just click and highlight it and then type that in. Year of completion, we said we did that in 2017. I'm going to say that I published these on the first day of November. That's when I created my online website. And it was in the... United States. I'm going to save that and now I have a, this first line is complete. Now you'll see optional while giving individual photograph information within the group is optional. It is recommended. Click new again as many times as needed to provide the titles for individual photos. Now that sounds really bad because it sounds like you've got to create 249 lines but that's not how it works. So let's click new. What we need to do is go over to our spreadsheet because I can put as many titles in this box as I can fit, up to 750, but I'm limited to 1,995 characters. So what I've got to do is go over to my spreadsheet, and this is the, where we're going to get this data, this far column. I'm going to click on the first one, and I'm going to say, okay, can I put in 70? So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to find 70. It's not going to be this 70, but it's going to be this 70. I'm going to, let's say 75. So I'm going to shift click on 75. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to paste that into the box. Now you can make that box bigger real easily. Now when I hit tab, you'll see that it's telling me that my limit is too much and it's going to delete a bunch of characters. So you can see that it deleted down to this Y Mooka Falls 01171. 
So we're going to select all. We're going to delete those. Go back to our spreadsheet. And now I'm going just to be safe and to try to make sure it's easy to keep track of. I'm going to use a nice round number. And I'm just going to go ahead and do 50 at a time because I know that's well under the limit. Because as you can see, my Waimuku Falls was a few, uh, only four or five below the other. Just to make it easy to keep track of, an even number of 50 is a really good number to do at a time, unless you can do 100 at a time. So let's copy, go back over to our spreadsheet. This time we'll paste it here. This time we're putting in 50. Again, we're gonna, these were published in November. Obviously, if you publish these in different months, you can only do one month at a time. So you might end up finding groups of names that are one month. Still make sure that a single month doesn't go over the 1995 character limit. It'll be a little harder to keep track of, but uh, using the month of your publication column in your spreadsheet, it shouldn't be too bad. So we're going to hit save. So what I have to do now is go back and add 50 at a time. Now you might have really short file names and you might be able to do 100. You might even be able to do 200. I don't know. Most of my file names are fairly descriptive. At 50, I know I'm safe. Okay, new group. And I put in 50, November, paste. Save. And I just keep doing that till I get them all in. Goes pretty quick. Even if you have 750, I'm going to only take you about five minutes at the most. And we have one more to do. This time, we only have 49. Copy. Back to the spreadsheet. New. 50. November. Paste. Save. When I'm all done, these columns... And you see that I blew it because I put in 50, even though I only had 49. These columns need to all app to this one. So I can just edit it, and it's 49. I accidentally uh, kind of got rushed there, kind of blew it. So now I have 249 titles provided in just five lines. So it isn't as hard as you think. So a couple caveats to watch for. First of all, if you click New and put in a title, and this is one that snagged me for a while and you hit save and nothing happens that means you have an illegal character in this title and so you need to go back to all of your documents the file name itself that you the from the jpeg you exported you need to fix it on the spreadsheet and if you've already sent the, if you've already done your pdf for the spreadsheet you need to remake that pdf the th problem with this here is that the kilauea that I is not actually an I, it's an I with two dots over it. And so now if I save it, it will work. So anytime that the save button doesn't work, you have an illegal character in one of your titles. If you have a lot of titles, it's difficult to track this down. What you need to do is put in 20 or 30 titles and just keep changing the number and narrow it down to figure out which titles actually is the problem. If you can't actually see it, once you know which title is the problem, then you have to look at it really carefully this uh, eye problem that I had with the two dots over the eye was really hard to see. Another thing to be cautious of, this is from an actual registration I did earlier, and you'll notice over here that it says 10, 1 of 10, and 10 plus. The challenge I had, I kept adding it and it didn't show up, and I realized it only shows 10 lines at a time, and it always goes back, once you create a new line, it always goes back to showing lines 1 through 10. So you have to go over here. If it says 10 plus, you've got to click this little arrow to be able to see the rest of your line. So here I'm seeing lines 4 through 13. So you can only see 10 lines at a time. And when you create a new line, it will default back to showing the first 10. It's easy to think that a new line you entered actually didn't get recorded. I can go back and edit these at any time. You can look at them. And I said you can make this box bigger just to get an idea of what's in there. But once I've done with that, this is the most difficult step. I'm ready to move on and I've only got a few minutes left and I'll be done. So at this point, you can hit save for later if you would like. If you do that, 
you can go back to your working cases and then bring it back up. It will bring you back to an overall review. Click on the step that you need to resume with. And now if I hit continue, that will be marked as complete. Our, almost all these are just really quick because we, we added our name and our profile and our address so we can usually just click the add me. I'm assuming that those watching this video are trying to register their own photography. If you're an organization or you're registering somebody else's work, then you need to do a little more research. I uh, work for hire should usually be no. Citizenship. Now, you might wonder why all these countries are listed here. Any country that has signed the Berne Treaty, I think it was 1986, um, and has agreed to this copyright treaty, any citizen of those countries can register their photographs with the U.S. Copyright Office as well. You do not have to be a United States citizen to register your photographs, and any country that has signed that convention will uh, recognize that copyright. Now, this here says citizenship, and it has a big or there, but when I read the directions, it said you should go ahead and put it in if possible. So put the United States, and it says it's nice to put the year in. I don't know why. We'll go ahead and put it in. If you're registering for somebody that's not alive anymore, it would be different. That's not what this video is about. We're ready to hit continue. Notice here, this is the claimant, and it says, if you are a claimant and your name appears in the user profile, click Add Me. So that's what we're going to do. Click over here and click Add Me. This will give you all your information. Okay. Hit save. Your name is now in the list. Hit continue. Okay. This is the rights and permissions. Again, this is probably going, should be you. Hit add me. Make sure that everything's in there correctly. Hit continue. Another time, this is who they're going to email in, uh, correspondence to. Again, you'll click add me and hit continue. Pretty simple. This is where they're gonna mail the certificate to. Add me, and all of your information goes in there, and hit continue. Special handling is only if you have to expedite a case because you have litigation pending, or you want to file a uh, infringement suit. If you're in that position, you should have already been dealing with an attorney. Don't try to do it on your own. And a good copyright attorney can help you with this special handling thing. It notice it says, if you do not qualify for special handling, please click continue without completing this screen. So most of the time, you're not going to put anything at all on the screen. Don't check any boxes. Notice there's no red asterisks. Hit continue. This is the certification. You're going to certify that you are the author, etc. Check that. This is your name, and I assume you should put in the name that you put in as your profile. This is the file name of that list. I'm going to go to my finder, and I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to find that list, and I'm going to highlight that text. I'm going to copy it, so that way this is exact. This is a tracking number that's optional, and it's for the applicant to use to do some type of tracking. This is normally used only by large companies that are submitting many, many, many copyright applications. And so they've developed some type of a tracking system. Most photographers won't need to bother with this. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna add a small a notice. This is something you give notice to the Copyright Office. All photographs were published on the same day when I created my retail website to sell my work. I don't know if that looks suspicious to them or not, but that certainly explains it. And then I hit continue. In this case, the last step is simply to review everything. Notice that all my boxes are now checked. I can go back to any individual step simply by clicking the link. You can scroll down through this list and review all of the data to make sure that you didn't miss anything. And it says, once you submit your application, you cannot make changes. So it wants you to review it. At this point, if you're a little hesitant still, you can hit save for later and you can log off. All you do is come back to your working cases, open it back up, and you're back to where you were. 
If you're ready to submit this, then you're going to click the Add to Cart button, and this will place it in the cart. Notice that you can always go over to the right and click the Remove Working Case, Remove to Working Cases, and it will put it back in your working case and take it out of the cart if you want. Basically, at this point, review everything. At the bottom are other is another working case but this one's been added to the cart. You can add multiple cases to the cart at the same time. Once you are ready to finalize, click the checkout button, and this will take you to the pay page. Click one of the two payment option buttons. It will ask if you want to proceed to the website that collects the money, just click OK. And here you will either enter your bank account information or your credit card information. Understand that when you pay this, once you make the payment, it's non-refundable. Once you get all the information in there, click the Continue with Plastic Card Payment button. It will let you put in an email address so that a receipt can be mailed to you. As you can see, I still haven't finalized this. This is one more chance to back out. Check the authorize box and then click submit payment to make your payment. This confirms your payment was successful, so click continue. And now you're going to upload that zip file that we created. Click the button and locate the zip file. This is a different zip file than we created because this is from an actual registration I did earlier. And then click Start Upload when you're ready to go. You can upload the files individually if you only have a few to upload. Just make sure you select all of the files along with your list. And once you've selected them all, then you can start the upload. I think sending a zip file is the safest way to do it. That way you know that all your files and your required list are all contained. If the upload fails, you'll know you have to send just the one file over again. Over here is a progress bar which shows how the upload is proceeding. And basically you just wait until the upload's finished. Once the upload is finished, click the big green button over here on the right. And once that's all done, hopefully you did everything right. And in about seven months, you should get a certificate in the mail that these are all uh, registered. Well, that does it for the video. I hope that uh, it was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask below. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button and think about subscribing to the channel. And until next time, hey, see ya.